Um, I guess we can get started because I don't, yeah, it's a couple of minutes past. We've got three people that aren't the ACF team, so we can unmute, chat, and uh, and go freely. But welcome to another ACF Chat Fridays. This is our um, every other week office hours with the ACF team and and ACF users, the community. So please, this is the the time when you can ask questions to uh, the team. Let's just do a quick recap. What have we been up to in the last couple of weeks? Uh, we have, obviously, we had 631 out a few weeks back, um, but we mentioned that last time. Sorry, 63, that was. Sorry, I'm now reading and speaking, and my brain is doing two things, converging. We also shipped ACF 6.3.1, um, which some fast follow fixes um, from the 6.3 release, mainly around block validation and the icon picker. Um, we also had a yeah a nice nice little fix around options pages uh, that had been registered in the UI weren't able to be duplicated originally and that's now been um, added that functionality. We have also shipped a couple of pro only releases since then as well just to fix some more bits and bobs around the six three release. So I think if you're on pro, you should be seeing six point three point one point two, I believe is the latest version. Yeah, uh, to update to. What else? And if you have been going to the ACF website recently, you might have noticed we've had a slight lick of um, a slight sort of refresh in terms of a logo, some colors. Um, this is part of WP Engine's wider brand refresh that happened. I've got a link, or maybe somebody, Mike, or someone, Mike's not even on the call. Someone can, we can put a link to it. Um, WP Engine as a whole has gone through a brand refresh. Um, which is not just WP Engine itself, but all of the tools and products within the WP Engine family, which includes ACF. So that's that's why the ACF logo looks different. The colors look slightly different. The site just looks cleaner, better. I think it's it's quite a nice um, change and, and just sort of maturing of the website. What else have we got going on? Uh, just a, a thing that's coming soon. This time last year, we did... Oh, thanks, Liam. We did, uh, we ran the ACF annual survey uh, and we're currently working on 2024's version, which won't be very different to last year, um, but that will be coming soon. So if you do see that pop across your Twitter feed or, or we mentioned it in a, in a couple of weeks, then please do a, go ahead and um, fill that out for us. What, what else? The best place to also hear about things um, is the footer of the website. Um, you can sign up for news uh, about releases, updates, things like the um, the survey. So we'll be we'll be shouting about that once that's out. Have we got anything else? Any updates? I'm just going to throw the team under the bus. Anything else we got to mention? No. We we as in ACF and WP Engine will be at the WordCamp Europe next month, but none of our team will be. There will be uh, Rob Stinson from WP Engine sort of product marketing who. Um, knows a lot about ACF and a lot about the other um, builder tools that WP Engine will be on the booth. So if you are going to Turin, go and say hi to Rob. Um, go get some stickers. Go talk to the WP Engine folks. Uh, what, right. I don't think we've got necessarily a topic for today. And obviously we've got a few people. Joey, I see you there. Thanks for coming. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, please just open it up. For questions, unmute, stick it in the chat, stick it in the QA tool, uh, and we can we can answer questions from anywhere. Um, but yeah, let's let's have a good chat. How? Uh, and I'll kick it off by just saying, is anyone updated to six three point X different versions uh, and using the new features like block validation, um, the icon picker? Has anyone got any feedback? Any thoughts on that? Oh, Anthony, you've turned your camera on. I thought I thought somebody was going to answer ask a question. <laughs> no, I, I was making coffee while the start of this was happening. <laughs> nice. I'm not going to ask him how he makes coffee because it normally tells me. Yeah, I, I use the power of the sun and a magnifying glass. Okay. 
You got to love that in Texas. It'd take me a while to make coffee if I tried that here. Um, I guess, Ian, this isn't an uh, answer to any of your questions. Just something I've been thinking about and wrestling with, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm just wondering if smarter minds than mine have been thinking about this. But just um, kind of the ACF way of kind of building things long, long term um, in a quickly changing visual site editing experience that we see WordPress moving towards. Um, how have you seen folks kind of bring a, a kind of a better cohesive experience? I, I, I felt like I've struggled for a long time with the site editor growing to what it is now and will continue to grow. Um, I struggle with the back of my head feeling like I'm not doing things that like the way they ought to be done but the way that I feel like they ought to be done is the way that I want to do them and I'm having a horrible time articulating how I feel maybe you can help me flush it out but yeah yeah I think I, I know exactly what you're saying in in this the way that the block editor the full site editor mm -hmm. is to to me solving a need for a certain part of the market mm -hmm. which is predominantly led by wordpress.com predominantly led yeah. by the diy site builders the people who are want uh, you know wordpress and automatic and that as a whole are trying to sort of shift people from a squarespace or a wix and this is the way you can build a site yourself very quickly but that's not the demographic of freelancers agencies people building sites for clients that you you don't really want them in the full site editor because that's going to cause problems as much as there are the things like block patterns locking and and more mm -hmm. restrictions around it so yeah I, I i know what you mean there's there's that there's the are we the when i say we freelancers agencies people who build sites for a certain way are we the target market for wordpress and that so therefore and you, you feel like you're doing the wrong thing because you're not doing it the new mm -hmm. wordpress way but of course the right way is always the way that you can do it and the way that you know how to do it and the way that works and the way that gets you know gets a site built in a certain amount of time for a certain budget because otherwise yeah. you can't you know you can't just keep building sites with the new shiny as it comes into the block editor every time for you know every client so i i don't think it's i don't think it's wrong to feel like that but it also mean i mean that you you shouldn't feel bad for just doing it the way you want to do it and that may be the way you've always done it it might be really classic it might be flexible yeah. content it might just be acf blocks and and that's my other point of like people who want to go to the block use the blockheads of the full site editor with acf that's the way acf blocks i think for us really shines because it's it's the ability it's that step into the block full site editing way of doing things but it's easier it's more as you would you would know how to build things with PHP rather than all the React stuff. It's quicker, it's cheaper. It's also more reliable potentially because we have to kind of worry about the backwards compatibility between mm -hmm. the really fast changing pace of the Gutenberg plugin, which then gets rolled into core quite rapidly. Things change. We are handling almost like a middle layer with ACF blocks to make sure that, you know, when you make changes to your blocks, they're not just going to suddenly go, oh, the blocks errored because cores change something. Um, so I think, yeah, you don't have to go down that road, but I think ACF builders can take advantage of ACF blocks. Um, and we're certainly, you know, we're not pushing it from an ideological point of view that blocks is the only way to do it, but we're definitely knowing that obviously that's the way core's going. And that's something that we should support in parallel and we should continue to make uh, really strong. Yeah. So people, developers, ACF, builders can just use blocks if they need to with acf blocks yeah and then on that i understand that there's multiple right answers it's what's the right answer for you as an individual but um um i've also struggled with just like being really confident in my workflow of when to reach for an acf block versus or how much of the editor to use right native blocks and all that um if I'm building a, you know, 
the same hero ACF block over and over again? Is that something that should right? Like when when do I cross over into yeah core blocks and things like that? Um, I'm obviously building stuff the way that I have been for a long time. Um, I'm just I feel like I'm tripping a bit and just lacking confidence in is this is this how I ought, am I doing any customers a disservice by you, you know things like that? Yeah, just, just struggling with confidence. Yeah, I, mean, I think. I, presumably, you maintain stuff for clients, right? So you have to go back every so often to something you did three years ago, and that's probably very different than how you would build it today. Sure. Yeah, uh, we we I think. We're in a, a kind of unique position with ACF is because we see, you know, a, a significant number of our customers are hardcore classic. You know, I've got a dashboard up here right now, you know, 1% of our users are still on, on WordPress 4.9 because they don't want to go to the block editor. And obviously that's still, a, it's a small number, but it's a, it's a significant proportion, uh, you know, it's still a significant number of people. And I think that when you kind of, when you see that there are folks that, don't want to use block.json. You know, we've tried to push people towards that since ACF6, right? Because, you know, that's the WordPress way. And if you want to use the new WordPress stuff, you need to do that. But we, I think we've kind of been reassessing that recently, right? Because we've had a lot of folks coming to us saying, well, hang on. No, I just want to do this in PHP. I know PHP. I want to build a PHP app. Don't want a theme.json. You know, I'm not building something that can have palettes and stuff like that. I'm building a specific website for one single customer. So why would I want that? Why would I want to build blocks that can take advantage of all these possible variables? Because I'm building something that's specific. Yeah, it's designed and it's going to look in a certain way and that doesn't need to be changed by the client. Yeah, and I think us having to kind of straddle those lines, we want to be there for folks that do want to take advantage of that new stuff and the new cool stuff and, you know, block bindings. We ship something experimental there just to see what happens. Obviously, you know, WordPress will carry on shipping things for that. I think it's, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from, from a kind of, am I doing this the right way? Because, you know, we're busy working on, on new stuff that we're here, but then WordPress are also, you know, shipping new stuff. And how do we, how do we take, carry on doing whatever, everything that we need to do that we know we need to do whilst also maintaining support for all the new stuff and trying to influence that? Because obviously, you know, we're a big player in, in custom fields. We know, we know a lot about how people use custom fields. So we feel, you know, we, we have something to give back to core there to talk about you know, our experiences and the way people want to do stuff. And I think a lot of the time, some of the stuff that comes to core doesn't consider that enough. So yeah, I, I completely, completely get, and I don't yeah. really have an answer for you, but just sympathy really. Well, yeah. I was just logging in for Joey's personal uh, therapy and encouragement session. So. Yeah. Well, welcome to the podcast, everyone. Yeah. But, the, but it is a question that probably many people are asking. Many people are facing, yeah. like we, we talked to, um, freelancers agencies that some say they disable all core blocks and just build custom blocks with acf blocks that suit the need for their design and that probably means that those blocks aren't very granular they're probably like the hero this is the footer this is the right. this is this section this is this component this is kind of uh analogous to the flexible content layouts where they would give they would define those layouts allow the client to add that layout over there two more of these over here and and have that flexibility but right. if you then you suddenly then go to a very small sort of atomic level of blocks where it's like well this is the paragraph over here and here's a column and here's a, an image they are now becoming the builder and the and, and the diyer rather than you giving them the layout and they're filling in the data effectively so we've, we've definitely got agencies that are doing that and just just doing core, uh, custom blocks. And we've got people that are building custom blocks that have the inner blocks um, mm -hmm. part of it. So you can then allow the the editor to say, right, well, this is, you know, this is like a hero and I've got my image over there and I've now got some text. And that is the inner block there that allows them to add headings and to add paragraphs and to be more controlling over that area of the content. But yeah, it's it's a tough one, and I, f I feel like you could just have to sort of go with go with the client and their needs, and then repeat that as as you need to. Because you know you can obviously create all your blocks if you start building the hero every time. You can you can create your set of uh, custom blocks and yeah. reuse them in a plugin that is installed on every site, and just extend things in the child theme and and whatnot. Yeah. Um, 
so it, it becomes you can make it repeatable and and reusable but yeah i i, I think we're ultimately when we when i say we as in de design developers and freelancers and agencies that are using that are used to the old way of doing things and are transitioning we're effectively having to just hack our way through wordpress and or hack around wordpress because it's not providing the the edit the, the developer experience and the editing experience that we're used to and that, because it's just not their target demographic editor and client effectively is not the same as our clients mm -hmm. and i'm saying ours as if i'm building sites every day but you know what i mean like it's yeah i, I i'm trying to i'm aligning us us with our customers who are developers building sites in a certain way and I mean, there's a significant number of folks that are still using Elementor and Divi and, you know, they're, they're, they're back in that world and they're not looking to change because, you know, if, if that's where your knowledge is, I don't see yeah. jumping to anything else is going to be so such a hard leap. I mean, well, look at look at Classic Editor. Classic Editor was said to be uh, abandoned in 2022, right? We're in 2024. Was that, was that what it was, 22? Yeah. I, I remember I, it being I, 22. I can't ever see that disappearing i don't think no. you can right no and, and and i think it comes back to like this is the this is what what make why everybody has has gone with wordpress it's open source and you have control of your destiny with open source software if this was a wix like your dashboard would be changing and you would have no control over that kind of thing so that that's the kind of stuff to keep in mind is be a little more confident that that you have complete control of these sites and it is entirely open source so yeah, yeah. you have complete control of your destiny there i think yeah. too it's really um, you know, when you've built something cool, like that feeling when it doesn't matter if it's a block or a PHP template or whatever, when you've built something really good and you take a step back and look at it and you think, wow, I really killed this. I don't think it really matters what the underlying technology is there. So it's just kind of picking something where maybe you feel confident making something good, regardless of whether that's the most, you know, cutting edge thing or if that's something that you've been familiar with for years, just sticking with that, maybe, you know, learning some things here and there. So you're confident in trying new stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, if you write something cool, you write something cool. And I think that's all that really matters that and the client being happy with what you gave them. Yeah. And, and on the note, the classic editor, now the WordPress.org repository is up to them, their rounding it shows that it's 10 million installs. It used to just be showing 5 million plus installs. It's now 10 million plus installs. So that's a really, <laughs> a really sort of telling stat about the usage. Um, yeah. Another, another aspect of it is though, it's like as a independent dev or I'm bidding on projects where clients are looking at other vendors, um, not just how does Joey enjoy building things, right? Because I don't, I don't particularly enjoy building things instead of a visual editing experience. I like writing code. I like writing Tailwind classes and Alpine interactivity. I, I like that stuff, and it's fun. It makes my job fun. Um, and I think it's ultimately, it's a, a good product at the end. But I know that clients are looking at other vendors who are whipping up full site editing sites, and they're knocking that out in four or five days. So not other other thing. other developers and, using WordPress and, still, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's not just okay. If I were to put myself in the client shoes, I'm not I'm no longer a developer. I'm no longer the opinionated Joey that likes doing things the way he does it. Um, is what's best for the client, right? And there's also that kind of lacking confidence. Am I still building things in the way that best serves my client? Hmm. Put aside what my preferences are. Am I building the? Am I giving the client what they need given the landscape's changing? Just another, I don't have the answer there. I'm not saying that I'm not doing that. It's just another question that's corrupted in my head. Yeah. yeah and it no. depends on, it depends on how you, you class doing right by the client, like right here and now for their budget and for their timescales. Great. Those other developers are knocking out the, the full site editing templates for them and it probably works, but will that work? when they come to change things and they come to redesign and they cut the things break and what, it, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying things are going to break, but yeah. There, yeah. Well, it's a sustainable a good of that is, right, as well. 
what if what if you want to, the customer changes their logo or something like that and it's using a bunch of blocks right i know that they're working on that right now and there's there's synced patterns i think it's i can't remember what it's called this week it changes every time i look it up but whatever that thing is right that's a fairly new thing and then so then you know what do you do do you go back and edit those sites that you built that way to use that the new stuff like who's paying for that you know where does the because a client yeah. isn't going to want to pay for something that they're not going to see an immediate benefit for right yeah i mean it it, it totally depends on the client because if the client comes to you and says I know about the WordPress block editor. I have seen it. I've used it, and I love it. I want that for my site. If they mm -hmm. if they do say that, then obviously you kind of have to go that way. But if you if you're a developer or you know freelancing, building a customer base, you're not going to want to go down those lengths for everything. Like I, we talk to developers that are like, well, sometimes I use Breakdance, which is I guess it's more of a modern Elementor version. Sometimes I'll build custom blocks, like. It just depends because it depends what they want, yeah. depends on how much they want to spend. And also sometimes it's just a brochure site and it can be bashed out in a page builder. It doesn't need it doesn't need to to be done the WordPress way for that client. Um and, and a lot of editors only know the classic way, right? We had somebody in, in our support inbox last month who said, Hey, I've just built this new site and it uses blocks and it's all cool, but the client hates it. How can I get all the data out of what is currently stored in blocks back into Postmeta so I can revert yeah. back to the way they know how to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to dominate the the call with that with that conversation, but I I just know that there are a lot of folks struggling with it. No, it's all good. It's nice yeah. to actually have a topic to go to deep on that we can be in just sat here. Yeah, asking yeah. for questions. Otherwise, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's tricky because you don't want to. I don't want to. You know, I, I have strong opinions about things in WordPress and I don't want to be like, I don't want to make this ACF versus core type thing because actually ACF mm -hmm. is very much parallel and compatible with core and we want to keep doing that. Yeah. But I do feel the frustration and I do feel that kind of, you know, wh wh where do I, where do I sit here? What's my, what's my position on this? Um, and and yeah. presumably, yeah, m many people feeling it. And I think going back to what you said there, you know, we try not to build we try not to form opinions on it almost because we don't we want to let you build the way you want to build right and if that's kind of been a tenant of acf right back from from the early days 10 years ago right when he started working there were filters everywhere you could do whatever you wanted and and that's kind of something we've kept as much as we can even into the gutenberg world and you know we've talked a little bit over the last few years about you know where, where we're going with blocks what's next and yeah, as we move more towards React, we're going to make sure that you can still do everything in PHP the way you you, know, you could. Filters yeah. are there, hooks are there, everything everything we can, and we're even pushing core to add more hooks. You know, there's there's recently mm -hmm. added things that help validate on 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 save. You know, it was slightly too late for us to use for our block validation, but it's there now. And if you wanna if you wanna interrupt the save of a page to do something yourself, you can. So, yeah, I think, I think it's getting better for developers in core and they're definitely kind of focusing more on it uh, rather than just, you know, the kind of UX front end features that have, have kind of focused the last year or so. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything on the roadmap, even if they're far out that make you feel like, okay, these are things that will make in the editor ACF blocks feel like they're, like they're supposed to be here. Yes. Yeah, that that that's and that is that's kind of the main focus of where we're at with blocks dev right yeah. now, right? We we shipped block validation. That was our kind mm -hmm. of last legacy thing because we knew we needed it. We knew it was a big thing, mm -hmm. um, and obviously that still uses all the the classic style ACF validation. Yeah, it gets the server and yeah. register stuff in PHP, but we we fully intend to to rewrite blocks essentially, uh, and it. It's obviously a much, you know, we talked about it last year. It's a big project for us. It's going to take us a couple of years probably to get to the full end goal. But we want to be, we want to feel native. You know, R64, I, I think we've talked enough about this that Ian's not going to yell at me. But like, we want to make it so that fields, basic fields, you can make it feel, you know, it's like editing a native block. If you've got some text in line, you can just type in, click on the block, type in there, and it yeah. will save it back to the field. So, right. That's, you know, obviously it's going to take us time to get there for every single field type because we have an awful lot and we rely on a lot of jQuery libraries and folks have mm -hmm. wigs that run by Tony MC, right? And we've got to, we've got to worry about how we're going to convert them 
and upgrade them and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to take us a while, but yeah, that's definitely where our focus is. We, we want it to feel way more native and much less jQuery text yeah. inputs. Yeah. And uh, there's a feeling that I have, like when I'm editing a block, like, like post launch, I'm editing client site in the same way that they might also be editing it. Like I'm looking at something that I've built knowing that my client could also be looking at that. And I'm like, gosh, this repeater field on the sidebar looks horrible. Oh, like, yeah. They probably Tell think. <laughs> Yeah, that is a, that is a problem. Yeah, we've we've got people that use flexible content in the sidebar, man, and I can't ah. I can't compute how how you build that and think yeah yeah that's the yeah. way to do it. Like, and that there's an education point there, right? For for mm -hmm. us, we need to do a better job of showing folks. Well, why are you using flexible content? That each layout should be a separate block, and you should do it that way, and then use the you know the, the Gutenberg experience of adding new layouts and things like that. So we're we're working on that too, but yeah, I, I fully get we 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 met with the the Gutenberg team uh, last year uh, to try and figure this out, right? Because we were like, hey, the sidebar doesn't work for us. We need a view. We need a we need a design element here that would benefit everybody. That is a way to to kind of do something on the page that's not in the editor, not in the sidebar, and is you know not copying something else and i think they've they're doing this in a few places now and they're using just a modal which is a bit of a shame because we kind of mm. wanted to push against that because everywhere else the modal is used it's for settings so I, mm -hmm. so we didn't want to do a modal you know we wanted something something new but hey if that's if that's the the design paradigm they want to go down we, we'll follow along you know we, we're not trying to be we're not trying to be different we just want to it's the reason we didn't make a ui for block yeah. bindings is because we want we want to yeah. label the core. We want it, you to feel native. Yeah. 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 I could even just like a bit more breathing room for anything that goes in the sidebar. Like um, a project that I just came off of is, um, you know, I've been managing Vimeo's WordPress properties for a few years and they're moving away from WordPress and going all on builder IO. Um, and basically they're using builder in a way that Ian described earlier. And that's, they have, you know, they have a, fixed number of kind of Next.js components that render visually in the editor. And when you plop one in, those fields show up in the sidebar. Um, but the front end presentation doesn't take like the entire available real estate. It's actually set at a smaller viewport and you get a little bit more real estate with the sidebar because that's where you're gonna be doing all your work, right? Um, I think there's both that being part of the solution, but then also uh, maybe improvements to the editing UI for ACF fields based on are we in a classic editor, or are we in a sidebar of, of the editor? I know you guys have done a bit a bit of that, but um, I don't I don't envy you in your position of, of just making <laughs> all of well, this a lot better than it is now. We're thinking about the new admin as well, right? Like we know that that's yeah. coming sometime, and that that's all going to be React. So we want to build essentially a React version of every ACF field, and mm. they'll. They'll definitely live in tandem for the foreseeable future because you know, we need to be able to render the HTML for classic. But if you're in a block editor instance, we'd love to, you know, we, we have Dale, it's a shame he can join us today because it'd be interesting to see what his thoughts on that. But yeah, you know, what, what would you expect if you're in an ACF block and you're editing in line essentially, right? So we're showing you each field that we've detected where it is from your template and we're showing you that mm -hmm. this is your date picker. You know, would you expect the toolbar to let you just hit a button and show you the date picker and then that's how you change the field? Is that is that the flow people want to edit fields mm. in a, inside a block? Or do you want that edit form where it's just a list of fields? Is that what people are used to? Right. So yeah, there's a lot a lot of UX, a lot of UX work to do on, on this topic, I think. Yeah, I, I guess part of the better solution, right, is when it makes sense getting things out of the sidebar that doesn't belong there in the first place. Yeah, and and arguably a text field doesn't belong there, right? If if you're output yeah. you're outputting a text field, it gets a bit quirkier here because we know some folks, you know, would use a select, for example, to completely change the template that gets rendered. And how do we handle that? Well, hang on, this text field is no longer visible in your template, so you can no longer edit it. You know, like, where does where does the boundary come for that kind of thing? So, but that that's kind of where we're thinking. We want it. We want it to feel pretty much like editing anything else in the block editor so text areas WYSIWYGs and and all that kind of stuff you just click on the block like you would a core block and type away that's the uh, that's the kind of end goal there
but yeah, long term. We'll we'll I'm sure we'll start sharing some more, you know, previews and pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting stuck into that now, actually. Now that we've shipped the uh, block validation and, and six three. Um, with any of the new updates to the advanced custom fields website, are you guys using the block editor for any of the content, ACF blocks, are you using your own stuff in that, in a way that could be cool to show off? No, the the site architecture is quite old. It uses, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of it is hard coded in, it's a classic template theme from back in the day that is still inherited it from Elliot, basically. So we've not, right. we've, we've just improved what it looks like on the front end rather than worrying about the back end. So the, yeah, copy changes, layout changes are still code PRs rather than using the editor. So yeah, yeah. It, it would be good to dog food though and, and go down that road. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and that's an undertaking for sure. I bet, yeah, that's funny. Elliot just popped into Twitter the other day, like out of nowhere. Mm, yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then it made me rem remember, it's like, oh yeah, maybe a couple months before the acquisition, um, he and I were talking about rebuilding the whole thing. That, that would have been fun. Yeah, the, yeah, that was it. Was definitely it was definitely due a refresh the website and yeah. it, and I think he yep. was doing a rebranding and then yep. that all kind of all got paused as he was you know yep. the acquisition to Delicious Brains, and then we yep. just yeah. oh yeah, that's right, double acquisition. That's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's been busy and it's hard it's hard that's to sort fun. of you know stop and get. And do those kind of projects, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something else I think you've told me in the past, Dean, is uh, you know, you come into a large organization, you, your 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 expectation was, hey, we're gonna have a lot more resource resources to get stuff done. But it turned out it's just that many more busy people. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Everyone's yeah. just busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the same when we move when it moved from just Elliot for ACF to Delicious Brains, where we've got more people. But then yeah. you, your work just fills that space, mm -hmm. and it's the same with WP Engine as well. Yeah, it's yeah. There's always so much to do. Well, I definitely appreciate everything that you guys are doing, um, even, even in some of the this kind of. Ups and downs of confidence and just excitement that I'm experiencing. Um, I, I definitely would be somewhere radically different if ACF wasn't what it is today. So, yeah, yeah, we we feel that. Yeah, honestly, I'd I'd, I'd probably uh, be with a lot of my pals over at Statomic if it if it wasn't for you know what ACF is. Yeah, because that's the thing as well. You you know you were talking about other vendors, other like developers building mm -hmm. different types of WordPress sites that you have to compete with, but you also have to compete with different platforms. And mm -hmm. Satamic mm -hmm. is, is another thing that, yeah, it's something I've never used, but it's one of these things that I, I the impression I get is it's a great developer experience, it's, but it's... The, cl the clients perhaps don't, they may come from WordPress and then go, yeah, but, but why can't I do this? Why can't I, no. you know? It is, it, it does seem to be the go-to CMS for the frustrated PHP WordPress dev. Yeah, because it's the sort of the Laravel esque world, yeah, isn't yeah. it? And it, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's built on Laravel. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. yeah, it's tricky, and and that's the thing as well. Like going back to you when we were talking earlier, and you were saying like, you know, how do I build, or when should I know to build certain stuff? And I think it all of this is client led. Like if you are so opinionated as a developer, and you give them you know, like a, a flat file CMS that mm -hmm. because you love to do that, but that doesn't work for the client, then that's that's just gonna, ultimately going to break that relationship and you're not going to be able to move forward. You've got to give them the site that they want, the editing experience they want. Yeah, and, well, and, I, you know. I, I've experienced this already. Um, there was a client that I had. And again, I hope other folks feel comfortable jumping in and I don't want to hog the entire call. Um, I had a client who's... I get a lot of my referrals to clients come through either in-house or contract SEOs. Um, and the SEOs and client was a Laravel shop uh, building a SaaS. And 
they wanted to build their blog and the SEO just defaulted to building on WordPress. I was like, well, if they're a Laravel shop, why don't we just build this on Stedimic? And we did that and the Laravel shop loved it. But my SEO buddy, he hates it because he's, I've now just removed his entire tool, tool belt of everything yeah. that every, every single tool that he has as a part of his workflow is now gone. And Jack Medade, the guy that runs Datamic, he and I were talking and I've been kind of one of many resources to him and communicating to him, hey, um, if you want clients to go there, here's, here are things that you need at a minimum. And it's a big roadmap for him. Um, it's when you talk about me competing with other vendors who build with WordPress in different ways, and also me competing with vendors who use completely different tools. Um, huge thing about WordPress is just the ecosystem. And you, we all know this. Um, yeah. It's just massive. Massive. Yeah, and that's something it's Satamic hard. can't compete with if he's building it all himself. And no, it's... He, he told me, he told me, because we, we were talking about, Jack was talking about like rank math, for example, in Yoast. He goes, you know, something to remember, Joey. He goes, we have, a, we have like five or six guys on the team. And he goes, you take rank math, their entire business is bigger than our CMS alone. Yeah. Like rank math is a, is a, is a bigger business than Statomic is as a business. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's wild. absolutely, it's, it's wild that the ecosystem within WordPress ha has yeah. so many mature businesses and companies mm -hmm. that are all doing like crazy business. Really. When you think they are just a plugin of a wider CMS, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. yeah. That's that is the the benefit of the forty three percent or whatever the number of percentages of it the web. Just, it just keeps, you know, and every time you check, it goes up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this has been a good conversation, Joe. I appreciate you you unmuting and yeah, going I, for it. Yeah, I usually have a conflict during this this time, and so I don't I don't often get to make them. But I was happy I was able to today. Nice. Um. Well, we are sort of. Um, winding down in terms of time wise so if anyone has got any last minute questions or anything else they wanted to add then please go for it but yeah no i i quite i quite like the uh the wordpress developer therapy session or the you know the acf <laughs> wordpress developer therapy session i think that's uh yeah i don't yeah. think we've we've got any further we've not answered anything but it's good to talk yeah, or, exactly. we're all, we're all on the boat together. That's all. That's just sort of a good reminder. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's just doing what they need to do. Everyone's just building sites the way they can. Yeah. 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 Righty. Are we? We are back in two weeks. I don't think there's any kind of public holiday or anything. Yeah, we will see everyone um, on the twenty first. And hopefully we can, we, we may get a topic and, and have some sort of structured discussion. That would be good. Uh, but if not, we'll, we'll be back with our usual open forum. Um, alrighty. Well, yeah, let's, let's wrap it up for now. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, good discussion. Thanks, Joey. Thanks everyone. Um, yep. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Cool. Thank you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.